The castle is hidden by time and it's covered by gentle green plate of the leaves under the moon. But silent granite stones can speak. Let's find it out. The cold past will tell us about the battles, these ruins. The time cannot crash these feet so far. Take off all the layers from it to the last. Or just take it harder by throat. You can die and it will reveal all its secrets to us. kilometers to the northern west from Kharkov, there is a treasure of the historical heritage of our region, the Sharovka estate of L. E. Koenig, the sugar magnate. The first mention about the Bogodukov land and the Merchuk River I was able to find dates back to the 1670. In the 18th century, these lands were acquired by Vasil Olkovsky. He handed down the lands to his son Sava. Having increased the territory and expanded the land, Sava in his turn has handed it down to his son Peter. It is precisely Peter who laid the foundation of the present castle. As it was pointed out by Kharkiv Vedomosti during the construction of the castle, the owner used the ideas of Francesco Rastrelli, the great architect of that time. Simultaneously with the castle, the building of the One Dome Church was laid. It was not only laid, but also sanctified, but it has practically not been preserved till our time. Since 1940, it was demolished. The castle in Sharovka was built simultaneously with the park in the manner of the West European architectural complex of that time. Peter dreamed of embodying something similar in Sharovka in order to impress his guests with beauty and splendor. In due course, by the second half of the 19th century, the castle passes over to the brothers Gabenstreit, Ferrer and Khrushchev. It is hard now to tell how their family has got to the Bogadukov land, but here they lived about three generations. In one way or another, they became the owners of the castle that's been running by that time. The brothers with the new force began to make improvements. In a happy coincidence, Ferrer was a practicing scientist and a capable botanist. Due to his manner and taste, he buys and lands flowers and trees, understands well in the landscape design. But Khrushchev, unlike his brother, preferred engineering, and later he attaches his son Dmitri, who later enrolled in the Kharkov Institute of Technology. Father and son were working together on the production of actin models of cars. In 1885, the estate and the surrounding lands were acquired by one of Kharkov's richest men, Leopold Yegorovich Koeng. He has acquired it all for 1,100,000 karbovanets. At that time, it was the equivalent of four sugar factories. The acquired Sharovka castle became the crown of the already existing cartel, which included the Trostenetskoye and the Gutyanskoye estate. All three estates can be called a real syndicate, not only with agricultural land, but also with processing and additional enterprises. The sugar production, granulated sugar, Trostenetskoye and Gutyanskoye, raffinated sugar, St. Petersburg and Trostinetsko. In addition, there were three distilleries, a roller mill, a weather station, two sawmills, two parquet plants, a transport network was built and developed, a railway and two transport stations, a telephone network, a power station, water-based systems, an artesian station. Leopold Yegorovich Koenig dreamed of becoming an architect since childhood. Though all his life was devoted to the sugar business, 
He had an extremely refined taste and paid special attention to the creation of the masterpieces, thanks to which the Sharovka castle was turned into a true medieval palace. For this purpose, the architect Otto Penner was invited. He has completed the second floor, three large rooms. He has used the all color for castle's interior and exterior sides. In 1900, the famous park builder George Kufald creates the park project, and his student Trail until 1913 forms a landscape park and terraces. In 1901, the engineer K. E. Schultz, according to the projects of the German architect Jacobi, has built the houses for specialists, barracks, the manager's house, the gardener's home with a complex of greenhouses, a playground with stables, carriage barns, a car garage, a security guard house. He has built the own steam turbine power station six years earlier than in Kharkov, by the way. The Koenigs family became the avant-garde in creating the foundation of agricultural and processing industry in Slavajanshina. In 1910 to 1912, the St. Petersburg company Moritz and Gerasimov constructed superb pheasant farms in the house of pheasants caretaker. After Koenig's death, all of the projects were embodied by his son. The 1917 revolution crossed everything, the entire heritage of Koenig era. After the Bolsheviks came to power, they turned Sharovka, you just think, into a tuberculosis sanatorium. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the available funding simply did not allow the park and the castle to be kept in good condition. At zero years of 21st century, the southern facade was plastered and metal roof was replaced. And after the sanatorium was closed, in 2008, it turned into a ghost castle without light, heat and people. Now I will show you the photo made in 1915. It was found in the archive. It is the castle's best condition, the apogee of architectural flourish and beauty. And that's what we have now. Why? Why haven't such a treasure with its amazing history of several generations? We do not save it and do not care about it. Should I say about preserving similar architectural monuments in European countries? Should I even mention about the same situation with preserving similar architectural monuments in European countries? But everyone who's come here can breathe life into it and make fountains work. Alleys will hear conversations of couples in love again. Light music will penetrate into the rooms of the castle.